Hey guys, welcome back. Last week we discussed a uh, rejection, right? Four four nine zero. We thought it would probably, you know, try to retest the high again, but we just got a continuous, you know, downpour towards support. So again, not surprising, right? We were kind of expecting a pullback. The market was overbought. A lot of stocks like Microsoft, Tesla, all had, you know, reasonable pullbacks into support, right? So honestly, nothing's changed so far in our outlook. So far, so good. So now. I am, despite all the war news, right? I think this is a decent sizable pullback, right? I think this level could, could hold a support, right? And I think that we could push up to, you know, 4,500, 4,550 on the ES and on the SPX, we could push up, right? I have about, yeah, 4,500, right, on the SPX. So, yeah, I am looking for this week to, you know, continue the rally and again, we do have July 4th coming up, right? So the market is not going to, you know, end heavily bearish right before that. Another good reason, right? So, I mean, this is obviously the bull version. So you probably asked me, right, at what point are you going to get bearish? So, I mean, let's go back to this chart, right? On the weekly, on the weekly chart, now that we're looking at the market, I remove everything. You can kind of see that we just kind of had an inside week, right? So, so far, I mean, there's nothing bearish about it. It just tells you the market kind of needed some rest, right so unless you can see this again i zoom out you can see previously right this level here was support turn resistance so again that is the, the bottom of where we broke out last week right so 4300 on the spx is the level if we break that then i'll get bearish otherwise right just an oversold bounce that we're going to continue to push higher nothing bearish so far and i see some people asking me right like are you still going to think the market goes down in the long term? I definitely do, right? But I, as I've mentioned several times, I still think that we have some upside left, right? Till some kind of key level breaks, right? You can see right here, this, I remove this. You can see if I just move my cursor across, it does have a trend line here, right? You can see this trend line. I mean, nothing's broken, right? We're still in an uptrend. So yeah, I mean, when I do feel like we could be in a longer bear market, I'll let you know, right? Till the... Till then, everything is going according to plan. Bitcoin broke out, right? Had a nice week. And now again, it rejected the previous level of resistance. You can see here, this is a supply zone. So no surprise here. Once it gets above 31.5-ish, right? Then Bitcoin can push up to 35 and 37. So that's kind of what I have for Bitcoin. Nothing's changed, right? Still see some more upside, at least up to 35, 36. We look at IWM, that is interesting, right? Because we broke back into this channel. So yeah, like if you're a bear, like this is kind of a good sign for you, right? Because this right here is a pretty bearish pattern. But again, you could think of this, right? As an extension and a one, two. I mean, it's complicated, but yeah, this has broken back into the channel. So if you are feeling bearish, at least on IWM, right? If it breaks, right? It the only way the bulls are going to get out of this alive, right, is if it can bounce off this 178, 177 level, right? And it kind of has an ABC, right? And then it comes down. This is kind of the only way I see, you know, bulls getting alive. Otherwise, right, as I mentioned, if we break below 185, it's very probable for it to come down to 172. So watch out, right? This is not a good looking sign for small caps at all. You're going to need to see like, maybe we could see a flush down, right? And a massive green candle. And that again, would be decent, right? For a move up before the next leg down. So that's what you would need as a bull. But yeah, I mean, it's not looking great at all. This is a pretty bearish reversal pattern. So let's see what the week brings. Let's look at QQQ, right? We spoke about how, right? I'm, I know there's a lot of lines, but try to follow along, right? This right here is one channel that we broke out of, right? Let me go to the daily chart. The lines are better on there. Yeah, that's one channel we broke out of. Hold on. Someone move my lines. Yep, one second. Yeah, this is much better. It makes more sense too. Hold on. Sometimes trading view just tends to fuck up your lines, right? And it's kind of not perfect. But yeah, what I'm trying to tell you is you can kind of see like QQQ is in a very strong uptrend. We've broken out of multiple channels, right? We do know that it was overbought last week. But so far, you can kind of see that we've not really, right, 
Let me zoom into the chart. You'll be able to see that this right here, this trend line that I've drawn here, is like on a minute scale, right? It's only the uptrend from May, right? You can see this trend channel right here is kind of the trend line all the way from May. And QQQ, right? Again, we're kind of sitting on a key level, same as SPX, where in both cases, right? If the market wants to break down, it needs to break the low of the prior week, right? And the low of the prior week is a 360 on QQQ. So if you break below 360, I'd, I'd give it room, right? I'd say it can still go as low as 356 and bounce because that's kind of where, you know, this channel starts, right? Could come down to 360, but it is on support. I kind of expect this level to hold, right? As it's done in the past, but it still has room to 364, but yeah, below 364 is kind of just like I had 4,300 on SPX, right? It would need to break below 356, right? For me to be more bearish because I do, right? I do expect it to have a sizable pullback at some point, but just not yet. I think maybe after July 4th, right? is probably when it pulls back into the channel. So yeah, that's kind of what I have on QQQ. With that being said, let's kind of look at the dollar, right? Last week we spoke about how it was, right? Looking bearish so far, we just came back down, rejecting the EMA. So yeah, I still expect dollar to continue selling off to the downside, right? Let's look at the yields. Yields have not moved, right? But you are starting to see some weakness below 3.6. It could continue to come down. And that, right, that could be one of the reasons where IWM could bounce is yields continue to sell off. But we do have PCE coming in. Right. So that's something to watch out for as well. Wicks again, we know it's broken a multi year channel. Right. So, I mean, nothing's really changed. It will eventually come down to 11 bucks. All right. With that being said, let's look at this week's watch list. Right. The first one I have right now is you can see that we've covered the gap fill. Right. I'm sure many people have pointed this out. But I do think, right. However bullish or bearish you are, I do think that AMD, right. And minimum, right. I think. It will right 110 to 115. It will it should be able to have an oversold bounce, right? Three percent move. So I mean that's kind of what I'm targeting, right? I'm just over one if it stays over 110, you could see 112, 115. But yeah, that's all I want for this week, right? But yeah, I have two options, right? For AMD. One is that the center thing is an ABC move, right? So this is your A. You could have a B wave, right? Up to 122 before it comes down, or number two that I have, right? This B wave could end here. And number two is we have a wave five to the upside. So let's kind of see which one plays out, right? I'm not super bullish yet, but I do think an oversold bounce is in store for AMD. The next one I have is CLH. And again, I'm not super bearish on it. I think that it could have a pump, but I do think I do count five waves to the upside, right? So if it pushes higher on Monday, I think CLH, right? has a chance to reject and come back down to, you know, 145, 140. So I'm kind of just watching for a pop and drop on CLH this week, if it does happen, right? The next one I have is coin. And again, I am bullish on Bitcoin, right? I did bring up Riot Mara a couple of times. So those played out well. So coin again, right? You can kind of see the weekly chart. We are kind of in some kind of flag, right? And it is attempting to break out. So again, 62, 61.5, right? 62. And if you want an even better confirmation, 64, right? If it breaks these levels, there's nothing, you know, that's going to stop coin from going up to 90, right? 80, 90 bucks. So yeah, coin does look interesting. Equal like targets is at about 100. So it's kind of fascinating, right? And the last one I have is cat. So again, the reason for that is I zoom out, you can see this kind of, uh, oh, someone moved my trend line again. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah, you can kind of see where I'm getting this trend line from, right? I mean, they moved it, but this rejection level here, right? Kind of a weekly level, right? And if I do this as well, you can kind of see we rejected the 0.236 fib, came back down. This is a super bearish weekly candle, right? We finished at the highs, we open right at the previous week's close and we just had a bearish candle. So yeah, the level, you would need to see it break 232, right? If it breaks 232, it's going to come down to like 225 and then 216. But yeah, it could, you know, just stay between these two food levels, completely possible. But yeah, cat doesn't look too great here, to be honest. But yeah, that's all I have for this week. Have a great week.